obviously Adolf Hitler, like when compared to a like a normal person, was very talented at painting. I think the main criticism against him was that he lacked creativity. See, it, we're talking like the early 20th century, which means that if you're trying to be accepted into a prestigious art uh, uh, academy, right? Like, it's not enough to be technically talented. There has to be something unique or special. Back then, higher education, especially for art, it wasn't like a factory line process of getting as many people degrees as possible. Like, there were only so many classrooms, only so many masters and professors to teach, and like, you had to stand out. And the reason he was rejected, I think, was, and, and you can kind of see, I think, from some of the paintings that he's done, you can see a lot of technical proficiency, which is um, which is good. There was there were struggles for sure, like you say, senior pool, with um, with perspective. Uh, I can see perspective issues with this just with my uh, with my eyes. I don't even need a ruler. You probably can too. Can you see it? Trace the lines of the building uh, in your mind, like the edges of the ceiling, uh, so you can form like a perspective grid, and you can see there's an issue here. Um, yeah, where's the point? Exactly, exactly. Uh, not to say it's, it's bad. I mean, it's better than anything I could paint, for sure. But it's, it, you know, it's, it's a matter of, like, who you're up against, basically. Uh, Mother Mary with the Holy Child, Jesus Christ, right here. Um, white Jesus, blonde white Jesus, uh, which is pretty interesting. Isn't it kind of interesting how there seems to be an art style difference in between Mother Mary and Christ? And the background. This background looks like more expressionist. Um, like it looks like something Bob Ross would teach you to do really quickly. Whereas there's more of there's an effort to do almost more of like a medieval kind. Of, you know how those medieval painters would like overdraw people's eyes and they would always like line in the the under and overfold of the eye and so, like all that stuff and like the perspective here of the face and the way this one's at a perfect profile. Um, and then in the background, you have like this much, it's not bad. It's just, it feels like there's a bit of dissonance or maybe like a, I don't know, a lack of refinement. But again, like he's, you know, he's better than I am. So just not good enough for the Vienna Academy, I guess. I like this one a lot more. The funny thing is, I'm pretty sure that a lot of art like this actually would have been considered, um, degenerate art by the Nazis. Uh, some of this, like, impasto impressionist stuff, uh, they didn't care for. They, they wanted, like, pure romanticism in their paintings, and they felt like abstract representations of the environment were, um, were, uh, um, a, a kind of, like, degenerate art. This one's nice and serene. I don't mind this one as much. It's just interesting to me, because, like, right over here especially, you don't see stuff like this in Nazi paintings. Um, the abstract form. Hold on. Nazi exhibition degenerate art. The degenerate art exhibition, 1997, confiscated. It was meant to show like bad art or whatever. Um, can I can I get like a, a show of all of the stuff they had? So a lot of the degenerate art was degenerate because of its subjects. Like there would be, um, there would be like like Jewish art or what, like a like an author would would you know stuff like that. And a lot of it was about like nudity or like racy stuff or whatever. But there was also a lot of stuff here. Like they also had contempt for some kinds of art styles. You know, I want to like go over specific ones here, so it's not just a bunch of titties. Wasn't it the most viewed art expedition in the time period? Yep, it was because they loved that shit. Oh, MoMA displayed these, the Modern Art Museum, Degenerate Art. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Who doesn't like titties? YouTube doesn't like titties. Art painted by Nazi government. I'm having a difficult time. You know, if you look up art Nazi government, all you see is degenerate art. It's interesting. It's almost like the Nazi movement has basically no artistic legacy. The artistic movement under Nazi Germany is defined by what they censored, not by what they produced. That's interesting. Well, difficult for me to offhand Google this stuff, I guess. Courtyard of an old residency. Um, ooh, these perspective issues, man. You all can see it, though, can't you? 
Even those of you who don't have any artistic background, you can see there's something off about it, isn't there? Um, yeah. Shame, if he was a bit of a better artist, he probably wouldn't have ended up heading Nazi Germany. Yes, it's very autistic. Well, obviously Hitler was autistic. Here you go. Yeah, man, art in Nazi Germany was really, uh, really boring. Nude statues of the ideal female and male bodies installed for the 1936 Summer Olympics. And it's like, here are the ideal bodies. No giant titties in our Aryan future, I guess. Um, House of German Art in Munich. Damn. This building fucking sucks. <laughs> Dude, look. They're like trying to do some kind of Roman Parthenon column shit, but th they're borderline brutalist in, in how they're so afraid of making a statement. Like, look at all of the money that went into this. Look at all the precision and all of the like engineering and um, architectural knowledge wasted on like, okay, well, our building should be made of stone and have columns. Yeah, also, I don't know why this column square. I don't, I don't understand. The Romans did it better? Well, the Romans were flamboyant and adventurous in a lot of respects. Column of lorries in front of a Warsaw museum loaded with stolen art treasures. Oh, I thought this would be a painting. This is just a photo of, like, war crimes. Okay. Um, you could only make a statue if it was of, like, muscular white people staring steely-eyed into the distance. That was the only kind of statue it was legal to do. Here's a rendition of medieval kind of art, except it's swastikas all over the cloak and shield of the knight. Okay. Water lilies by the Nazi painter Ludwig Detman. Okay. You don't have to give any credit to them, but notice how this art does way better at blending like realistic humans with ex like kind almost expressionist um, natural scapes. It's well made but sad. It is sad, isn't it? It is very sad. It's supposed to be some children playing together in like a forest by a river, which is, I mean, you'd think that would be like, um, you'd think that would be like a almost universally positive subject to paint, but everyone looks sad. We can't see this person or the girl laying here, but this kid looks like they have shell shock, and this girl looks miserable. It's, a it's actually a really saddening painting. I, I... Because their parents just died in the war? Oh, is that it? Oh, so that is it. It's, so the painting actually... It, wait, is that true? Do you know that? No, the painting is called Water Lilies. Is this meant to be sad, or is it just... I, I don't know. I don't know. We have, like, the classic propaganda poster, which we all know what these look like, right? We all know what World War II propaganda posters look like because we've all seen billions of them. There was a graveyard in the painting? Did I just not see it? Oh, these are... Gra oh, are these graves? Oh, they are! You're right! It's more clear over here. Okay, I thought this was just, like, abstractly, it becomes, like, foresty. Okay, okay. All right, so they're playing by a graveyard. That's a little bit more tonally coherent, then. Okay. It is a good painting. It's just, you know, if this girl's skin tone was one shade darker, they would have shot the artist. Book burnings. Ah, yes. Nazi art, of course. Still see a lot of this shit today. Who puts a graveyard next to flowing water? Um, in Europe, they there are a lot of like cities in Europe that have been around for millennia, and a lot of the graveyards over there are just like continuations of graveyards that have been built upon over and over and over again. It would have been like a village would have been built near a river and they would have built the graveyard just like just ran, like like 200 people live in this village they build a graveyard you know um 
and then like things grow and they grow and they grow and they grow uh and eventually you have like a weird sort of anachronism of modern construction alongside old planning designs that's all the art i get to see okay degenerate art forms man they showed like no paintings I kind of wanted to see more. I know they don't want to, like, showcase a bunch of Nazi art, and so people will, like, jerk off and go, oh my god, it's so good, but, like, I, I want to criticize it. What about this Ludwig Detman person? A German... Impre yeah, Impressionist painter. Okay. Shortly before his death, he was added to the Gottbeg Nadeten list, a roster of artists considered crucial to Nazi culture. What year were these made? Why is the year not listed here? That's annoying. I was kind of hoping they would show more paintings so it could go like, look at how his art changed as the Nazi regime took power. 